The first Pokemon we're going to be looking at today, right, is going to be Charizard X. Specifically, Special Sweeper Charizard X. When people think of special attacks, they like to think of Charizard Y. You know, it gets that Heat Wave, gets that Air Slash. Charizard X is actually a pretty unique option. And when people think of Charizard X, they usually think that it's a big physical attacker. So we're going to be taking a look at how we can actually build Charizard X as like a special sweeper wall support Pokemon that can do like pretty much anything. And to do this, we have to like, uh, I was saying a little bit earlier, we have to cross a lot of T's and dot a lot of I's in the team building. Uh, you can't have a lot of very specific weaknesses. Obviously, you can't have a lot of rocks weaknesses. Uh, you don't really want to have a lot of water weaknesses, but you do need to have other water weaknesses in your team to bait your opponent into leading very specific leads that, uh, you know, that you can influence with your leads and so, stuff uh, like yeah, that. Yeah, Charizard X. How do we supplement our Charizard X? What are some good Pokemon that can uh, provide very good support for Charizard X while covering up for some of its weaknesses? So let's talk of some of Charizard's weaknesses. We got like rocks. We got water. Uh, we got like electric. Uh, once it mega evolves, it'll, you know, resist the like electric and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, only be two times weak to rock. But it will then gain weaknesses to like ground. Uh, you know, it'll lose its resistance to fighting. Uh, it'll, you know, become neutral. That's already neutral to ice. But there's a, there is one Pokemon in mind. I know we're hovering Nidoking. It's actually not Nidoking, even though Nidoking's actually pretty good. Uh, Nidoking doesn't have the exact oomph that we kind of need to deal with this matchup. And I'm going to talk about it. Actually, let's talk about it. So we're actually going to be adding Dugtrio to the team. So let's look at Dugtrio and Nidoking together. Let's look at Dugtrio and Nidoking together. So... Uh, Dugtrio and Nidoking, I see a lot of people compare them as, like, the Tier 2 Stealth Rock setters, because a lot of people think, like, oh, man, you gotta have Aerodactyl, that's, like, the best Stealth Rock setter. Or maybe even something like Mew. Mew's, like, a really, really good Stealth Rock setter. We're not gonna be using those today, we're gonna be using something a little bit different, because these two Pokemon bring the electric resist to the table that those two Pokemon just don't have. And also, like, Aerodactyl's weak against rocks, Charizard's weak against rocks, that's not what we're about today. Uh, we're going to be using some electric resist, and there are differences in between Nidoking and Dugtrio. Obviously, the big difference is Dugtrio is weak against, like, uh, fighting and uh, fire versus Nidoking actually resists the fighting. Nidoking has, like, a little bit higher attack. It's a little bit slower. It's a little bit bulkier, but uh, Dugtrio has the big um, steel type. And you may be thinking, like, steel type doesn't really give it that much versatility. Uh, you may be thinking, like, you know... All it really gives it is like an immunity to uh, poison, and Nidoking already has immunity to poison. But the biggest kicker here is Nidoking uh, takes super effective damage from Psychic. That's a huge big one, and uh, you know Psychic resisted by the Steel. But uh, the really big one here is that Zapdos is better versus Nidoking than it is against Dugtrio. That is 100% the reason why we are going to be using Dugtrio over uh Nido king is because doug Trio can come in on zapdos and zapdos has moves like toxic thunderbolt u-turn lol and it's slower than us by the way and uh and drill peck like drill peck can chunk Nido king if you switch on it you're gonna get two shotted by neutral nature zapdos after stealth rocks after drill peck and i don't want that happening and zapdos kind of already soft checks charizard so, like, I don't need that happening. I'd rather just 100% counter it. Dugtrio is one of the most annoying Pokemon. And we've talked about it before. You specifically have to go the Alolan Dugtrio. We'll be talking about move sets in a second. And like I said, I did want to supplement the team with other Pokemon that had water weaknesses so I can influence our opponent's team preview from the start of the game so I can know what they're leading with. So now that we have Dugtrio and Charizard X Special Attacker, we have one physical, one special, it'd be really, really cool to start adding... Um, some sort of speed control into the team. I think adding some sort of speed control into the team would be a really, really good idea. I just don't know exactly how yet. Obviously, it's going to be through the use of Thunder Wave, but it's like, what Thunder Wave users do I want to use? We can hover Starmie for now, because Starmie actually brings a few things to the table that we are going to be lacking later. So we're going to put Starmie there for now. See, I'm trying to think of like common Pokemon. Whenever, whenever you're building a team, right, there's certain Pokemon you have to respect. So uh, I would say the big three are... Mewtwo, Melmetal, and Aerodactyl, right? Those are, like, the big Pokemon that dictate, like, the whole meta, right? They dictate the whole meta. Everything about them, uh, you know, skews the whole game. After that, you have Pokemon like Venusaur, Snorlax, Muck, uh, to a special extent, like, Gyarados, Partner Eevee, Alakazam. Those are all Pokemon in, like, second tier. So you want to have ways to deal with those Pokemon. And, uh, you know... That, I would say those kind of like 10 or so Pokemon kind of dictate what is really good and what's popular. Uh, we're going to actually decide to put a uh, 
Snorlax in this team as well. It's going to be a specific Snorlax. It's going to be this one. All right. So, so far, our team's looking relatively standard. Um, you know, let's move this one over here and let's talk about some things. We're going to sit on Snorlax for now. So, we have Charizard. It's a special attacker, but it looks like a physical. And then we have Dugtree, who's another physical attacker. Rock Setter, good thing to add. Snorlax is going to be a bulky, sort of soaky wall sponge. It's going to be probably our only wall in this team. The rest of the team's probably going to be pretty aggressive, but, you know, it gets moves like Body Slam and stuff like that. For additional speed control, it's the, type of, it's the type of Pokemon that can, like, bring you back if you're starting to get behind in the game. And you always need, like, one or two of those Pokemon just in case. Also, Snorlax is a really good counter lead to a lot of the leads that punish things like Dugtree and Charizard. So, very good addition right here. How's it going, UCF fam? Uh, Starmie is a water type with speed control. Very, very good. Great lead. Uh, something you always have to respect if you're, like, uh, you know, the opponent. You always have to respect something like that. But another thing, like, Snorlax has, like, weaknesses to fighting. Dugtree has weaknesses to fighting. Pokemon like Charizard in base form. And, uh, you know, to, uh, Starmie has that psychic resist. So, like, if they have Machamp lead, Machamp's, like, super, super good against things like Dugtrio and Snorlax. You always can, like, switch in, uh, you know, Starmie or Charizard and come in, like, hot and just get, like, a free switch in those Pokemon and start dump trucking them. So, it's really, really good. Really good coverage here. Also, note that, like, Starmie's weak against, um, you know, Ghost and, like, stuff like that. And Snorlax normal type. Like, great, great coverage there. I love seeing it. We actually are going to add another, um... We actually are going to add, I think, one more Psychic type to the fray, but I'm still thinking about it. Because, like, Venusaur is still a little bit of a problem. Uh, we are going to need really good ways to deal with Venusaur. Because Venusaur is very, very popular right now. Sure, we have a Charizard. Dugtrio, sure, it can deal about 60%. Uh, Snorlax can kind of fight it, but, like, we can't really switch in on it. Otherwise, we're going to get Leech Seed, Sleep Powdered, have a bad time. Starmie does not KO the Venusaur unless it switches in on us. See, I'm thinking Executor, but I'm thinking, since we're using, like, a Charizard team... I want to be more aggressive about it. I want to take, like, the fight to the Venusaur, and I don't want to just do the cop-out, like, just use a Timid Venusaur. I don't want to use a Timid Venusaur. I'm thinking about maybe uh, doing a Victory Bell. I said thinking. Still thinking. Just thinking. A Lone Raichu is okay, but we already have, like, a crap. Like, if we let's just put this here. On let's just look if we put this here. If we were to put this here, uh, we'd have to way too much ground weakness. Like, ground weakness once we Mega Evolve. Ground weakness. Ground weakness. It's too big. It's too big. I think we might have to actually just put the Executor. Executor was my original option, but I said I wanted to be more aggressive. I think if we do Executor, our last Pokemon has to be really, really aggressive, though. Like, super, super aggressive. Uh, one good thing Executor brings to the table, though, is it is another uh, electric resist. So, uh, you know, if we're if you have, like, base Charizard on the board and we haven't got a chance to Mega Evolve yet, we can always switch into Dugtrio. But if you don't want to switch into Dugtrio, we can always switch into Executor. Executor has really good matchups versus a lot of Pokemon. And I think Executor actually does bring a lot to the table. The problem with this is we're going really heavy on Special Attacker. So the last Pokemon has to be an aggressive, physical Pokemon. Like, no if ands, or buts. I like it to be fast. Uh, I could put the Aerodactyl, but I don't want to do the Cop-Out Aerodactyl. Like, I really don't want to do the Cop-Out Aerodactyl. I'm actually thinking Tauros could be usable. I actually do like the Tauros here. What about Zapdos? You guys aren't getting it. You cannot put the Rock's weakness on the Charizard team. You cannot. You cannot. It does it does not work. It is it is not it. Hitmonlee's okay, but Hitmonlee has like a ton of like common weaknesses. Like we can't just stack like psychic weakness. Uh like we could, but like a lot of Pokemon that carry psychic. So like if I were to put Hitmonlee here, right? Uh, you know, we would lose Starmie, Executor, and uh, you know, Hitmonlee to just an Alakazam. Uh actually, let me think about this. I think I'm going to cut the Executor. I actually think I'm going to cut it. I think I'm going to cut the Executor. I, I like the Executor, but it's not its not what I'm about. I'm, I'm just not feeling the Executor, guys. It's just not its just not it. And we can't have that Rocks damage. We cannot have that Rocks damage. What if I don't like this? That's still weak to Alakazam. Alakazam is a big problem. I think the Victory Bell is a better pick. I think Victory Bell is a better pick. We're going to be looking at here. And there are a ton of strengths that go along with this sort of team. Uh, obviously, it looks like we're relatively weak on the special attacker side. Which we are. We only really have Starmie and Charizard. So, against things like Melmetal, we can technically have a bad matchup. But, like, literally, we've been supplemented with a freaking Charizard. Yo, like, we have a Charizard. Like, Melmetal ain't, no, ain't nothing. Melmetal ain't nothing. Yo, Reggae Rebel coming in, guys. Put those subs up. 
for Ray Gay Revel. Thank you so much for rejoining the Plus Bus. Going four month streak. Yo, four month streak. Thank you so much, my friend. That means you get to pick a Pokemon for us to build around. I want to see it. I want to know what you're working with here. But uh, yeah, like I said, it looks like we're really weak on the special side, which we kind of are, but I do really like the things that Victory Bell brings to the table. Uh, you can kind of tell a pattern I have going here. Uh, I wanted to supplement our team because I felt we were a little bit too weak to things like Mewtwo Alakazam. So Dugtrio versus Nidoking and Victory Bell versus uh, Venusaur, they get access to Sucker Punch. So like really, really good priority moving against Al Alakazam. Obviously, you have to play correctly. You can't just throw them out all willy-nilly because, you know, they can go for Recover, they can go for Calm Mines. But it is a really, really good option, like super effective dark attack. It'll finish them off there at half, and uh, it's great for pinning them down. I also really like the addition of Tauros here. It's another normal type. It was either Tauros or, um, it was either Tauros or uh, Kangaskhan here. And I'm actually thinking I want to go back to Kang, but like if you look at our team, if we take out the Tauros, we're not nearly as aggressive as I'd like to be. I feel Tauros is a lot more aggressive against things like Zapdos at kind of like gatekeeping those Pokemon. Tauros is also another facade user. If you look at our team, one thing they're going to want to do a lot is go for like, uh, you know, paralyzes. You want to paralyze our Starmie. Uh, you want to burn things like the Doug Trio. Uh, you want to poison a lot of stuff so I can switch and I have two facade users able to do a ton of damage here so now that we have the team we can start talking about the play style we can start talking about the move set start tweaking the items and stuff like that no, not items so but you get exactly what I'm talking about here so we got three big fighting weaknesses and three fighting resists before we go Charizard X which is really really good and what's I was talking about the fighting Pokemon that can actually pressure you like Primeape is not really that big of a deal. A lot of primates don't even run fighting attacks. I know I don't run it. So your main fighting problems are going to be, like probably Mewtwo X is probably your biggest fighting issue. Uh, but other than Mewtwo X, you have things like Machamp and Poliwrath. So against things like Poliwrath, you got like that big psychic. Uh, you get that big power whip. Uh, you could do a lot with double edge. Uh, you just can probably almost live it, but you would just switch to any of these. Uh, you know, you can do a lot of damage first, uh, or you can just switch to any of these. Because the good thing is, a lot of these Pokemon can, like, beat the Poliwrath if you switch to it. It's like, you can switch in on the superpower, its stats get lowered, and then from there, you just absolutely dump truck it. Uh, you can Willis with Charizard, Psychic, uh, Power Whip, what have you. You're all easy peasy lemon squeezy. Against Mewtwo, uh, you know, Mewtwo's pretty good. So, like, uh, you know, Mewtwo, you're gonna have to, like, sucker punch it. Uh, you have to go for, like, sleep powders or whatever. There's a lot of problems. Uh, from Mewtwo X, but, like, they're not things that we can't deal with. Uh, Alex, how's it going? But I do know that we have glaring weaknesses to fighting. It's just that since fighting is such a low popularity uh, move, there's so many... Like, what what stabbed fighting moves are there? Like, you're not afraid of superpower from random Pokemon. It's only if it's really stabbed. So it's only really, like, Mewtwo X, Poliwrath, and Machamp. You, Hitbon Lee's not common. Hitmonchan doesn't run fighting attacks. Primeape isn't common. It doesn't run fighting attacks. So it's... It's completely okay to go this deep into a fighting type weakness because the amount of times you're actually going to see fighting type attacks in the meta is so, so, so low. Like, worst case scenario, you see Brick Break on something, and Brick Break's not stabbed, 75 base, goes up to 150. Pokemon like uh, Snorlax are going to love that every single time. So, that's the way I see it. So, we're going to talk about some moves here. We're going to talk about some natures. We're going to talk some move sets. And uh, to start things off, uh, I have a hasty Zard, but I do think that probably something like timid or modest might be better it might even be really better to be modest on this thing because zard special attack isn't the best thing in the world and you want to get really big two shots i haven't crunched a bunch of numbers yet but i'm thinking modest might be the best nature for this type of charizard just because you want to be able to two shot a lot of things with moves like dragon pulse after the switch so this is the move set we have here uh note that we have roost because restoring health is really really good your opponent's going to be able to get stealth rocks because you can't really do anything about them getting stealth rocks so uh if you can sometimes Sometimes you switch in Zard, uh, take your Stealth Rocks damage, even if you're in Mega Form, you only take a quarter, and uh, you know they're going to switch. Sometimes you just roost up, know they're going to switch, then switch out, and so you can continually switch in with this Pokemon. Having access to recovery is really, really good, and Roost and Woolwisp go very, very well together, because uh, obviously you put the dot up on them, break their physical attack, or walk away, wall them out with Roost. You've seen me do it a million times. It's pretty good. Last but not least, uh, how do I get over there? There we go. We got Dragon Pulse. That's the really big move here. Dragon Pulse is really, really big. Obviously, it's not as strong as something like Flamethrower. But like yeah, I said, right. it's the strongest Dragon right. special attack in the game. Yo, thank you for the follow, Alex. Thank you for the follow, Alex. Hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday. And uh, yeah, it's just 
relatively unexpected. A lot of Pokemon are expecting Charizard X to be a big physical Pokemon. They're going to switch to their physical walls like Pokemon like Polyrath, like Aerodactyl to deal with it. And you're going to pop him in the face with a really big D-Pulse coming in from a special Charizard X. Very, very good. And uh, we opt to have Flamethrower over Fire Blast on this thing. Uh, I don't really think you're getting that many KOs with Fire Blast uh, in situations where you wouldn't already get uh you know two hit KOs from flamethrower anyways so this is the move set it's pretty cookie cutter uh but it's more of the team that brings this whole pokemon together and you're really banking on the fact that they're going to expect you to be like a physical zard x and so they're just going to switch the wrong pokemon all the time you're going to be able to get free damage in with b pulse where you normally wouldn't so after that we have a uh, starmie here starmie this is the cookie cutter move set for starmie i've used for a long time uh well it's it's tweaked we have Thunder Wave, that's that big speed control, Psychic, Scald, and Hydro Pump. A lot of people really like Ice Beam, a lot of people really like Thunder Bolt. Uh, I don't really think that those type of things are that big of an issue. And I really do like the Hydro Pump, because it gives you an advantage in like two matchups, right? Sometimes, you know, you just gotta deal big damage against a Pokemon like, uh, you know, Alakazam that's like at, you know, 65%. Hydro Pump, your best friend. Like, that's the move that's gonna save you in that situation. But uh, the reason you use Hydro Pump is specifically for the Aerodactyl matchup. So since we're using a Modest Starmie, guys, we're using a Modest Starmie, a lot of the time I always say against Aerodactyl, if they lead Aerodactyl and you lead Starmie, there's like a few different things you can do. They can opt to go for Taunt to stop your Thunder Wave, right? If they Taunt your Thunder Wave, uh, you know, you're left to just have to go for Scald, but then they can go for a free Rocks, and if you get the Burn, that's great, but if you don't get the Burn, you know, they got their free rocks, they can switch, they'll be back later. Or, you know, another case scenario that can happen, they can go for like a rock slide that can flinch. They can go for like a two shot with crunch. Rock slide's a two shot on the modest Starmies if you're not running bold. So like, you're really playing a reactionary game where it's like a 60-40 in their matchup because they're the, peeper, they're the person that decides the outcome. So like a Scald only does, let's see, Scald usually does about 80%, maybe 85%. So even after the burn, they're still going to be alive. And, like, that means they can always go for, like, the fadeaway rocks. Even if you get the Skull Burn and they go for, like, something like a Rock Slide or Taunt that turn, they can always go for a fadeaway rocks the turn you actually KO them. So, like, I think High Trump's really, really good because they get one turn. They get one. They can go for their Stealth Rocks. They can go for their Taunt. They can go for their Crunch. They're not going to KO you with the Crunch. You can just reply back with the Hydro Pump. It's a 110 base. 80 accuracy. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Um, but... It's really, really good. It's specifically there for Aerodactyl, and I highly recommend it. At least, at least give it some a shot. At least give it a shot. You will not be, uh, you will not be disappointed. I think. So here's the Victory Bell move set. Victory Bell brings a lot to the table. Uh, let's go and actually check out the team. We're actually going to be running an Adamant one. We're going to talk about why we're using Adam over Jolly in just a moment. But let's talk about the team in depth. Like, what are Pokemon that give us problems? Uh, Mewtwo's a Pokemon that give us problems, and uh, Aerodactyl is a Pokemon that can kind of give us a problem so aerodactyl is really good against charizard they're going to want to set up those rocks because they see the charizard in the team preview it's the you know the brain dead crackhead option they got a tunnel in on that charizard um so that's why pokemon like starmie with its tweaked move set to deal with aerodactyl is so good victory bell's pretty good at dealing with aerodactyl we're starting to see a lot more wing attack aerodactyls but victory bell's still pretty good if he doesn't taunt us he can go over that big sleep powder once we get one uh, Swords Dance off. We can one shot with Power Whip, and then we just kind of one shot pretty much everything else. It's pretty good. Uh, Snorlax also, you saw that we put Ice Punch on it specifically to make it a lead versus Aerodactyl. So Aerodactyls aren't really that big of an issue versus this team. And at first glance, Aerodactyl was an amazing lead versus this team. And so there's a lot of people. Can Timid Starmy KO? Uh, no, it can't. You have to be modest. You have to be modest. Has to be modest. Timid Starmy does not get any of the KO rolls. Like, Timid Starmy doesn't get nearly as many rolls as you would against things like Venusaur. So, like, Venusaur, after Stealth Rocks damage and Scald, gets KO'd by, like, Ste Scald, Stealth Rocks, and Psychic KO's Venusaur on the switch in. And that is amazing if you're modest, but not if you're timid. So there's so many more reasons to be timid than modest, in my opinion. Sorry, so many more reasons to be modest than timid. I can't believe I said it like that. But, uh, yeah, so Pokemon like Aerodactyl, at first glance, give us a lot of issues. And so a lot of people that are really good, they'll have a core that they really want to lead Aerodactyl, but they have leads that counter the common Aerodactyl punishes. So you have to not only check the Aerodactyl, but check the Aerodactyl punish. A good example is when you see a lot of people go like Aerodactyl Gyarados in their core. Aerodactyl checks all the things like Charizard, uh, Gyarados can Mega Evolve, and check the things like Starmie. And so that is a situation in where Victory Bell comes in very, very good. 
because Victory Bell soft checks the Aerodactyl to an extent, like I said, they have to carry Taunt. Uh, you know, they're most likely going to go for rocks. You can go for a free sleep powder, uh, or you can just pop in the face with a power whip. Like, you you have a good matchup versus Aerodactyl with Victory Bell. But also, Victory Bell is a good matchup for something like Gyarados. Uh, Victory Bell has a good matchup for something, well, I wouldn't necessarily say it's good versus Venusaur, but it's not something that is terrible. Like, he doesn't know if you have power, sorry, he doesn't know if you have uh, Poison Jab or not. And if you are worried about, like, your Venusaur matchup, you can try and tech on Poison Jab. Like, it's totally possible. So, like, Victory Bell kind of changes the game for you and gives you a better matchup against a lot of those other type of water Pokemon that can have, like, a matchup against Starmie. Like, you, they can lead their Starmie against your Starmie. And you can lead Victory Bell, and they can go for a Psychic. You can hard switch out to something like Snorlax. You know, break the wrist, walk away. You have safe switches in all these situations. And that's one of the things that Victory Bell adds as a team that Venusaur kind of does, but I think Victory Bell is just a different way of doing it. Because Victory Bell has such a better matchup versus those Psychic types through the use of Sucker Punch. So we're running Adamant Victory Bell because we're using Sucker Punch. If we weren't using Sucker Punch, I would say we're gonna, we'd use Jolly to get the max amount of speed. Because I think this thing's rocking a 70 base speed. But uh, yeah, Swords Dance Sleep Powder. We got the Sucker Punch priority moves. Great for things like uh, Starmie once they've uh, been chipped just a little bit. Great for things like Alexam after a Swords Dance. Great against those Mewtwo's. And it really does help us in those specific matchups. Uh, Swords Dance obviously set up. Pop a Sleep Powder, pop a Sword Dance. You can start one shot and things with Power Whip uh, if it's neutral. And if you get like two or three Sword Dances, you're just going to one shot everything with Sucker Punch. I highly recommend popping a PP Max on this thing, but uh, other than that, uh, it's still a pretty good Pokemon. So after that, we have Tauros here. And Tauros brings a lot to the table as well. Uh, it's packing a 110 base speed, so it's actually a lot faster than things like Zapdos. Zapdos was another Pokemon that I listed at the start of this whole thing. They gave this team a lot of issues because Zapdos has the same base speed tearing as Charizard as 100. So we want Pokemon that like slightly speed creep it, like Starmie, Jolly Tauros, uh, you know, um, Jolly Alone Doug Trio. We slightly speed creep those 100 base Pokemon, and uh, it gives us like an advantage in a lot of specific matchups. So we're going to back to Tauros here. Obviously, like I said, you got to run that Jolly. Timid Starmie, 100 by KOs of Starmish Pumps, but ne not Mega Arrow. Oh, that's 100% what I meant. Um, Sorry. Like, that's that's what I meant. Like, you have... I was talking about KOing Mega Arrow this whole time. Like, regular Aerodactyl isn't that big of an issue, but Mega Aerodactyl is, like, a really big issue. Sorry, I should have been specific. That's totally my fault. Yeah, we got Jolly over here. And uh, the reason we actually add Taurus to the team is because once you start fighting the really good players... Uh, status moves becomes a lot more prevalent. Uh, burns, poisons, thunder waves. A lot of the time when you have Starman on the board, a lot of the things that a lot of people are going to want to do against you is paralyze you. So you can just switch to Tauros uh, or your, your Snow Axes or Pack Massad on that thing as well. Facade makes it so uh, this move doubles its power if the user is Poison, Burn, or Paralyze. And I get, I get this question a lot. If I'm burned, does my attack get cut and then doubled? No. Facade goes through the attack mitigation from Burn. And doubles your attack. So, like, if they burn you, that's probably the best one. Because uh, Toxic deals, like, double damage every turn. And uh, Paralyze cuts your speed. It makes so you can skip your turn. But uh, Burn just does that slight little dot. And just, you just are not affected by it at all if you're using Facade. If I were to double edge, I would do half damage. But, like, Facade, you still do that massive damage. Got the big EQ for electric types and things like Muck. Got the Rock Slide specifically for things like Aerodactyl. Uh, Taurus actually has a pretty decent defense as well so like you can kind of lead this first aerodactyl if he's gonna try and fight you with like rock slides you'll win you'll win the trade uh it's a pretty good pokemon and um yeah i just really think Taurus is good other moves that are good on this thing it gets like a uh, sub i think it might get taunt but i don't think so so i really just like this move set because double edge is really really good it can one shot a lot of sweepers after stealth rocks damage so like something like alakazam uh, you know, if I set rocks and they bring the Alexam in, I can just double edge and they're probably gone. They're probably deleted. And if they're not deleted, well, they're within Sucker Punch range or something like that. So, Tauros is a pretty good Pokemon. It's the speed that it has that gives it the versatility in all the matchups. So, I really do like uh, Tauros uh, in this team. After that, we're rocking Snorlax. We're going to be running an Adamant Snorlax. I think uh, Adamant Snorlax is better for this type of team because... Uh, there's a lot of times where self-destruct is like really, really good, and the careful Snorlax just doesn't get the rolls. And I feel like I said, we want to be a little bit more aggressive. We want to be able to, able to weed this thing as a counterweed against things like Aerodactyls. And so that's why we're packing the Ice Punch. So we have Ice Punch, Self-Destruct, we got Earthquake for the Electric Types, and Body Slam. So yeah, this one's not running Facade. I wanted to run Facade over Self-Destruct, but I do feel that if you're adamant, you should always be running the Self-Destruct so you can get the big KOs on stuff. And since we already have a Facade user, 
and, if, since I have a Snorlax and Tauros, they're probably going to be pretty wary about using these status moves. And if you really think they are, just switch to Tauros. You'll be probably fine. So Snorlax is pretty good. It's our one bulky wall Pokemon. Uh, this Pokemon is pretty much in the team preview to soak the damage. Like, if they get, like, a runaway Starmie that I can't really do anything about, they totally pin me. They have, like, Starmie vs. Doug Trio, and I don't want to fodder. Uh, you know, I can switch to this guy, absorb some damage from my Scalds or Psychic. It's pretty good, and, uh, you know, I should be able to be fine. This is, like, the one Pokemon you have to get yourself back out of, like, a really bad lead. And it's a really good counter lead against things like Aerodactyl. Uh, if Mewtwo's go, like, Mewtwo Y, like, Snorlax is an amazing Pokemon. You just pop the Self-Destruct, pop the Body Slam, break the wrist, walk away. Love it. So, Dugtrio is the last Pokemon, right? Dugtrio's last Pokemon. I've used this moveset a bunch of times. It's so good. Stealth Rock Suck a bunch of Rock Slide Earthquake. I've actually seen a couple people cut Rock Slide for Toxic, and I, I do not disagree with that, especially on this team. You could totally do that if you want, because um, to Toxic's really good. If you know they're going to switch to something to, like, mitigate your damage, like, if you know they're going to switch to, you know, Gyarados or uh, Zapdos to block your Earthquake, or they're going to switch to something like a Machamp to block... You know, your Rock Slide or something like that, your Sucker Punch. Pop a Toxic on that switch and just switch out. It's pretty good. Uh, like, it happened to me a couple times in games. And I was like, wow, that's actually not that bad. But Rock Slide is really good because it does give you advantages in a few specific matchups against things like the Legendary Birds, against, like, other Charizards and stuff like that. So I do like the Rock Slide. The 30% chance flinch is really, really good. And like I talked about earlier, the reason we're using Doug Trio over something like Nidoking King is because we really want to improve our Zapdos matchup. So... Overall, I think this team is pretty good. Um, how would I organize the team preview? How would I organize the team preview to give it that big bang for its buck? Like, what does this team say that it does really well? Like, how do I want to influence the I team? I think this is a pretty good lead. If I lead these three. Because, uh, oh, let's think about it like this, right? There's a lot of Pokemon that check these three. So, uh, you know, like a Golem, for example, can get Rock Side for Charizard. Earthquake for Dugtrio. He'd win that trade every time. But you can also get, like, Superpower to fight against, like... This. So if, if someone had a goal on their team and they saw my team was like, I could beat that. I could beat that. I don't want to fight the victory bell. Uh, but I could beat that. I don't want to fight the Starmie. But oh, I could also beat the Strux. I got to lead Golem. They might lead the Golem. And they, they might have a, a really good thing to switch to from Golem. They're like, well, if I do lead Starmie and victory bell, they have things to switch to. And that's totally fine. But like, if, I, if they lead Golem in this situation, that's telling me they have the superpower. Because their superpower checks these two Pokemon. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't do it. And so... Uh, I'm able to scout a little bit more about their moveset, about their uh, playstyle, based off the influence that I give them. And uh, I think this is probably the best way to do it. Separates our fighting type weaknesses a little bit. Uh, we're showing our fire type weakness over there. Maybe I do it like this. I like that a little bit better. Separates our fire type weakness because we have two big fire type weaknesses. And uh, yeah, I'd be totally fine to use this game on this team on stream. I think it's a pretty cool team. Uh, but, yeah, that's Charizard X Special Attacker Edition. Hopefully you liked it.